Wag yung kayo magkadisgrasyahan tayo niya. Sinasabi ko yung magdidisgrasya kayo. At madidisgrasya kayo. Hindi ako urong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Good morning, Malacanang uh, Press Corps and uh, to our guest. Welcome sa regular press briefing ni Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Um, magandang uh, umaga po, buong Pilipinas. Happy Tuesday and uh, good morning to the ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps. As you know, yesterday we had a cabinet meeting and the President started the meeting by expressing his exasperation that corruption continues even in his administration. He cited the case of Nayong Pilipino, which leased government property for a ridicul ridiculous long period of time of 70 years beyond the lifetime of anyone. And he considered this as a contract which was grossly disadvantageous to government. He therefore announced that he was sacking all members of the board and management of Nayong Pilipino. The papers um, that will formally terminate the entire management and the entire board of directors of Nayong Pilipino will be issued in due course by the executive secretary. Likewise, the president expressed um, um, uh, regrets over the manner by which two Filipinos were again kidnapped in Libya. Of course, he has stated previously that he was thinking of, spent, of sending frigates together with the Koreans no, to at least send the message that the president takes the the plight of the Filipino OFWs very seriously, but he has since um, considered the advice of the cabinet to first form a task force headed by the um, foreign secretary and composed of uh, Muslim members of the cabinet, including Secretaries Mamao, um, Alonto, um, and uh, even uh, Labor Secretary um, Bellion, no? um, to deal with the hostage crisis in Libya. The problem that complicates um, this latest case of kidnapping is that the kidnappers are not state agents of Libya. They are militias who are engaged in an armed conflict also with the Libyan government. No? And that is why um, it was deemed more prudent no? to work with the Libyan government to see what the demands are. No? Now, it was Secretary Bellio who raised the issue that uh, the Korean who was also kidnapped with the Filipinos and the Filipinos were working for a water company and that water in Libya is considered somehow equally valuable as oil. No? And that's why the Koreans, when they said that everything has to be done to secure the release, were actually you know, um, exerting pressure to the Libyan government given the fact that they have threatened to leave the ongoing water project in Libya, which was deemed to be very important in Libya currently. No? So the status right now is that um, we have formed a high-level all-cabinet member team to deal with the Libyan government and uh, help in the effort to recover two of our countrymen who were kidnapped together with a South Korean national. On the issue of um, um, rice hoarding, the president, consistent with his pronouncement on the SONA, made it very clear that he will not hesitate to use the entire power of the state to utilize police power, even to order the seizure of hoarded rice in uh, the warehouses of uh, these rice hoarders. No? And so he invoked national security in this regard. So we warn rice hoarders that the president will, full, will use the full force of the state and force open warehouses where this hoarded rice may be found. Now, other than that, um, there was um, a briefing made by TESA Director General on the National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan where the proposed budget was approved. There was an update on ports and domestic shipping routes. We have restored um, commercial shipping to and from Manila, Davao, Cotabato, and General Santos, which had been previously suspended because of cheaper air flights. There were mass transportation solutions um, presented by the DOST secretary, which the president praised, and which um, 
the DOTR secretary um, confirmed could be utilized in our build, build, bid, provided they have already secured the necessary certificate of um, safety. And um, there was also a presentation of the draft um, executive order on localized peace talks, which pretty much restates no, the um, terms and conditions of the localized peace talks, as I have briefed you previously in the earlier cabinet cluster meeting. So that's the um, brief summary of what happened in the um, in the cabinet meeting yesterday. On good news, um, the construction of Iloilo's biggest irrigation project will start after 15 years of delay. According to the National Irrigation Authority, the Halawur River Multipurpose Project Phase 2, JR, JRMP, nasan si Panay News? Tama ba yung pronunciation ko? Halaur is expected to break its ground in October of this year. 24,000 farmers and their families will benefit from this irrigation project, which will, be, which will provide year-round irrigation water delivery to 9,500 hectares of fresh irrigable area, as well as rehabilitation of 21,624 hectares covered by five existing irrigation systems in 23 municipalities and two cities in the province of Iloilo. We welcome also the latest annual World Trade Statistical Review of the World Trade Organization. According to this report, the Philippines ranked third among all exporters of manufacturing services on physical inputs with a total amount of 2.767 billion US dollars compared to 2016's 2.725 billion US dollars. Meanwhile, exports from other commercial services reach a total amount of $23.5 billion, placing the country to 13th spot. The report also noted the country is in 44th place in the merchandise exports with total amount of 63 billion, higher compared to the 56 billion US dollars in 2016. Likewise, the country is on the 33rd spot in commercial services exports with 36 billion dollars in 2017, higher than the previous year's 31 US billion dollars. Questions from the Malacanang Press Corps. Sir, before that, we would like to welcome your visitors from uh, Samar, Mayor Isidro Bandal, former Mayor Teresita Bandal, and Ms. Maida Bandal, and of course, from our friends from BBC. We also Question. have my, my inaanak, Isabel Schneider, from Switzerland, who is here visiting. Welcome. MPC question. Celerina Monte. Good morning, sir. Um, sir, there's this latest figure ng inflation, which is 5.7, and I think it's five-year high. Uh, was inflation, the increasing inflation discussed during the cabinet meeting? And there's the, is there any possibility that the government will approve those recommendations made by the House, led by Speaker Arroyo? It was not formally discussed, but the president has previously expressed uh, alarm also over uh, rising inflation. The recommendation given by Speaker Arroyo was considered by the economic cluster. Um, I clarified with um, Secretary Pino that his recommendation is the issuance of SRPs um, for fish products, except that, um, and as far as importation of fish products is concerned, um, there's a restriction by law that it cannot be delivered de immediately to the markets. No, has to be delivered at an intermediate point, which has to be amended before we can actually affect uh, importation of fish products. No, but we're looking at um, all aspects at further alleviation measures, and of course, the statement of the president against rice hoarders was because the increase in price of rice was a major contributor to the increase in overall in inflation. No? And that's why the, the president has made it very clear he will use the full power of the state to break open, if need be, the warehouses of rice hoarders. Pero meron na bang plano na, like, any action regarding these rice hoarders? Kasi parang that's always the promise. Pero parang wala pa tayong nakikita na hinuli. Well, actually, lumabas po. Nung minsan po, may tinawagan ng presidente na ilabas ang bigas at lumabas naman po yung mga bigas na inaasahan. No? Pero uh, patuloy po kasi yung problema ng hoarding. Kung babasahin niyo po yung uh, report ng uh, um, Senado, no? mukhang talagang business as usual sa kanya yan. Kaya naman ang presidente, acting upon Intel also provided by DICA no? and the Bureau of Customs and um, other sources, has said that he has identified where these warehouses are and um, he has given them notice and that if if they persist in hoarding, he will break open the warehouses. 
but it hasn't reached the point anyway that we have to do that. Okay, follow up, Joy. Other issues again, Joy Balancho. Sir, uh, bilang nabanggit nyo na rin yung pagsisibak, ano na pong status ni Secretary Lisa Massa? Was it discussed during the cabinet meeting kahapon? Mm. And ano na pong desisyon ng Pangulo? Wala pa po. So she remains uh, um, a part of the administration. I intended to ask. Again, I forgot. But napakadami pong buong tinanong kahapon. So nakalimutan ko si Lisa Massa. So next time, I will ask. Maybe this afternoon po. Um, sir, another, another issue po. Yung kay... ASEC mo kauson kasi kahapon parang uh, meron na rin sinabi si PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar na hindi naman talaga siya uh, pinaalam yung paggamit kay ASEC mo ka ano na po bang plano natin uh, when it comes to federalism campaign ano na yung clear um, recommendation or plano ng Malacañang kay ASEC uso? wala pa pong final plans kaya po nagulat kami na may ganitong nangyari no? nag-uusap pa po meron pong interagency talagang meetings ongoing and the last meeting was on the 31st no, of uh, the month, of last month. So nagulit na lang kami na um, meron ng ganitong, uh, um, kumbaga, propaganda. No? Um, but it was very clear in our meetings that there would have to be a trainer's manual and that there would have to be minimum content to be discussed by trainers. No? So ang unang-unang gagawin po dyan is a trainer's training that we had hoped that uh, ASEC Moka Uson will also attend. No? like everyone else who wants to uh, be a disseminator for federalism. Pero sir, um, are you urging her to stop posting or talking about federalism in social media? Wala po akong jurisdiction sa kanya. It was his boss, Secretary Martin Andanar, who already spoke that uh, she was not authorized to embark on this uh, undertaking. No? She is under PCOO po. But it's a lot of Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, is the president aware of the controversial video posted by ASIC Mocha? I think he's been made aware. And what was his reaction on the video? Well, now everyone knows what federalism is, but not exactly in the manner that we want it. No? But um, I think he shared my sentiment that it must have been, uh, um, there must have been good intentions, but uh, he agrees that there has to be more substantive discussions on federalism. Secretary Andanar yesterday uh, said that uh, even Executive Secretary Medea Aldea was annoyed even before the video was uh, posted, just to the mere fact that um, sinabi sa media that ASEC MOCA will be the spokesperson on uh, federalism. So what will be the next move of uh, Malacanang? Uh, Alam niyo po, natatakot ako magkomento dyan dahil double hearsay yan eh, no? According to ES from uh, Secretary Mandana Andanar, no? So I suggest that you ask them directly, no? Kasi um, I do not know if ES actually said that because it came from Secretary Andanar. But all I know is that there has not been a um, designation on um, who the main spokesperson for um, federalism will be. I know my role was recognized as presidential spokesperson and for as long as the president um, includes this in his agenda that I would have to uh, play a major role in this. But I continue to await for the uh, dissemination materials. No? Um, although there are schedules that um, I have agreed to speak, hindi pa po nagsisimula yung mga schedule na yan. Okay. Sir, given that the president is also not in favor of the way it was presented, uh, I mean through the video presented by uh, ASEC Moka, did he give any specific instruction about Actually, this? wala naman po siyang binigay na instruction. At... Uh, the president was very cool about it. No? I mean, um, he's a, you know, primary, he's a first and foremost a believer in freedom of expression. Um, but of course he knows that uh, charter change has to be more serious. But uh, to him, um, it was not really a big thing. No? Um, he would want a more uh, rational approach to the dissemination. He found it, um, well, unconventional to get the people's interests uh, into federalism and in a way I guess no everyone's talking federalism probably not in the way that we want them to talk about federalism but certainly we're sure that uh, the number of people who don't know about federalism has gone down let's just transform the debate now into something more substantive okay thank you, thank you sir uh, still on federalism Rose and then Joseph still. Uh, sir good morning 
Yes. Sir, uh, ano po yung reaksyon nyo dun sa pahayag ni Gabriela Party List Representative Arlene Brosas na hinihiling nila na mag-apologize si Asik Mokauson at uh, alisin yung, i-delete yung video na kontrobersyal tungkol sa federalismo at uma, umasta siya o kumilo siya ayon sa Code of Ethical Standards of Public Officials and Employees at ayon po sa Magna Carta of Women, ano po yung masasabi nyo rito? I defer po kay Asek Moka Uso. Dahil hindi naman po niya ako spokesperson. I think she can answer that very well. So, papayuhan nyo, bu- papayuhan nyo ba siyang uh, umayos? Ayon sa pamantayan po ng isang uh, serbisyo publiko o opisyal ng gobyerno. At ayon din po sa Magna Carta of Women. Well, sa akin po kasi, wala pong jurisdiction kay Asek Moka. No? I... I am not her superior in government, and I come from a completely different um, uh, department from her. No? So uh, I leave it to her, and I leave it to her boss, um, Secretary Martin Andanar. So do you encourage, sir, yung mga public officials na sundin po yung Magna Carta of Women at saka po yung Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for public officials? I think all public officials took an oath to uphold all laws, and therefore it's incumbent upon all public officials to, in fact, abide with all existing laws. Sir, ano po yung, katulad po ni Presidente, ang sabi nyo kanina, wala siya nakikitang masama dun sa paggamit po ng masiselang bahagi ng isang babae para po gawing katatawanan ng isang public official? Well, hindi naman yung sinabing walang masama. Sinabi lang niya na it's freedom of expression, gawin lang maseryoso ang uh, dissemination activity dahil seryoso naman itong bagay neto. Pero hindi naman yung sinabing walang masama. Last na lang po. So, sir, na, naniniwala kayo na hindi dapat gamitin yung katawan ng babae para ilako yung isang advokasya ng pamahalaan? Sabihin na lang po natin, kanya-kanyang istilo yan, pero kung ako po magdi-disseminate, iba po ang pamamaraan na gagamitin ko. So, hindi nyo gagamitin yung katawan ng babae? Ah, hindi po. Okay, thank you. Uh, from BBC, please. Microphone, please. So, Howard Johnson, BBC News. Yes. About constitutional reform. The 1987 uh, constitution, sometimes referred to as the Human Rights Constitution because it followed years of torture and killings under martial law. With this new constitutional reform, will, will this government uphold and honor the articles about human rights in Article 3? I don't think there's any substantial amendments on the Bill of Rights, even under the proposed constitution. In fact, there isn't any um, substantial amendment as far as the Bill of Rights is concerned. And according to Article 3, you know, in the last couple of years, how do you assess the government's um, upholding of those uh, sections about human rights? Well, of course, it can't be perfect, but um, I would say it's not as bad as the previous administrations. There are allegations of human rights violations, but I challenge all lawyers, in fact, to document the evidence and file the proper charges in court because under our system of law, unless you begin the actual legal process, then it won't work. So what we've had so far are numbers, um, complaints, but never any formal filing of cases. So the last time I had a speech delivered on my behalf before the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, I challenged lawyers, file the cases because that's what we should be doing. Mm. Okay, in and along CNN Philippines. Hi, sir. Sir, going back to um, Asik Moka, so the president said, or the president is, was cool about it. You said that uh, it's just unconventional way of um, promoting federalism. It's part of freedom of expression. So does this mean that um, the president does not see the need to call out Asik Moka for the video, which obviously has uh, also gotten a lot of negative feedback? I guess what uh, the president says is, you know, she said that, let it be. But there is, of course, formal dissemination as far as the um, work output of the Constitutional uh, um, Committee is concerned. And uh, the work of ASEC Moka Uson can't be a substitute for honest to goodness dissemination. So if she still wants to continue with these types of content on her blog, she will be, I mean, you'll just let her do it. She was not actually performing her official functions because as uh, Secretary Andanar clarified, she was not authorized to do that um, video no? uh, on behalf of the um, Interagency um, Committee on Dissemination for the um, proposed uh, charter change. No? So she was doing it in her personal capacity. You can't stop her. 
So she still can on her personal blog. She, she can do to. anything and everything on her personal blog. On another issue. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. Joseph, may follow up. And uh, Raymond Tinasa. Thank you. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, you mentioned that the president was made aware or informed about the video of Asik Moka. So he was reacting on a mere briefing, not, not actually seeing the whole video. It was shown to him. Okay. So did he laugh, entertained, amused? He wasn't laughing. He was, um, as I said, he was cool. That's freedom of expression. He is a staunch believer in freedom of expression. Kaya nga mahilig magmura, no? So, wag niyo siyang pigilan, no? Wala rin siyang pinipigilan, no? But um, he says, um, we know that this is not uh, exactly the federalism that we want. There has to be an official form of disseminating on the proposed changes that we want on charter change, but that's her freedom. Sir, uh, follow up lang dun sa uh, issue ng rice hoarding. Sir, related dun sa pinupush natin na rice tarification, Sir, ngayon pa lang, eh, hindi na halos matapos-tapos yung issue ng rice cartel, rice hoarding, and the like. How can we be assured that once the quantitative restriction na bahagi dun sa rice tarification bill ay lifted na, na hindi ito samantalahin naman ng mga rice cartel, mga hoarders? Hindi kasi namin makita kung paano sasamantalahin niya ng rice cartel. Kaya nagkakaroon ng cartel kasi nga, yung importation ngayon, Eh, on the basis of quotas. So, mayroong mga malalakas dyan na nakakakuha ng quotas para mag-import. Dyan nagsisimula ang korupsyon. Kung aalisin mo yung mga quotas na yan at hahayaan mong lahat na po pwedeng mag-angkat, mawawala yung korupsyon dahil mawawala yung diskresyon ng mga taong gobyerno kung sino ang po pwedeng mangalap ng bigas. Lahat ngayon pwede ng mangalap basta magbayad ng napakataas na tarifa. No? At yung tarifa naman gagamitin para sa mga lokal na mga magsasaka. No? So sa tingin namin, yung tarification nga, yung pag-aalis ng discretion sa taong gobyerno na mag-aalis din ng korupsyon. Pero hindi ba sa realidad, yung may kakayahang makapag-angkat, ayun din naman yung may kakayahang ding makapag-cartel at makapag-control ng presyuhan sa palengke? Well, ang katotohanan is kapag meron kang kakayahan na mag-angkat, nagagawa mo ngayon yan dahil may influensya ka sa gobyerno. Alisin mo yung importansya ng influensya sa gobyerno at hayaan mo lahat ang pwede mag-angkat. E di lahat yan mag-aangkat. Thank you, sir. Okay, Joseph Morong. Sir, you said that there's a better way of explaining federalism and it's a very serious challenge in terms of acceptability. No? Uh, I'm being set to 67%. Mm -hmm. You don't want to charge attention on that. Um, why did you say that? Because what is the effect of this kind of um, attitude and manner of... Uh, presenting the concept. Ay, hindi ko na po alam ang sagot dyan dahil hindi ko naman pinag-aaralan yan. No? Ang sa amin lang po, even in the interagency meeting, naghahanap kami mga pamaraan para mas mabuting maintindihan yan. May mga suggestion na comics, may mga suggestion na mga jingle, may mga suggestion na commercials, 30 seconders, um, may mga proposed sa uh, jingles na ang lyrics are importante. So yun lang po ang tinitignan natin. Pero hindi ko po alam yung sitinatanong nyo na epekto ng ginawa ni, uh, ni Moka Uson dahil hindi naman po naman niyang pinag-aaralan. No, I mean, does it damage the concept? Well, sa tingin po namin, uh, hindi po namin alam. No? Pero one thing is sure, bagamat hindi kami sang-ayon doon sa pamamaraan, eh, talagang naging controversial ngayon ang federalismo. So ang, 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 ang uh, hamon ngayon is how do you translate this controversy into something positive for federalism. So, um, you know, there's always an opportunity in anything that happens, and that's the challenge now. How to transform this new interest on federalism spurned by this controversy in explaining why we want this, cha this change to the Constitution towards federalism. So, will this, will this help in the, will, the, will this help the public understand the concept when you have a very interesting jingle and the laxidal uh, attitude about it. Well, I think anything will help, no? May kontrobersiya kasi. So habang may kontrobersiya, pinag-uusapan, so discuss magkaroon na tayo ng mga diskusyon kung ano talaga yung federalismo. Bakit natin gusto na mga lokal na pamahalaan na ngayon ang mag-implement ng mga proyekto dahil nga mas malapit sila sa mga taong bayan na hindi dapat sumas... Nag, nag, um, um, hindi dapat nagdedepende dun sa mga ahensya na napakalayo sa probinsya. No? So, ganun ang gagawin na siguro ngayon. No? 
try to make the most out of the controversy and explain the positive side of federalism. Eh, naririyan na yan eh. Hindi mo naman mababalik ang, ang panahon no, para burahin yan. So let's, let's try to use it to our favor and um, just explain now what the controversy is and what true federalism is. So yun po yung hamon ko sa mga totoong uh, nagsusulog ng federalismo. Gamitin nyo na po itong pagkakataon na lahat ay nag nagtatanong tungkol dito sa federalismo at explain ko ano ito. Okay. Okay, last two on federalism, uh, Christine and then Ace Romero. Hi. Hi, sir. Just on the statements made by the president on the video, uh, was was the state uh, were the statement made during a talk between the two of you or during the cabinet meeting last night? No, it was a private talk. Ah, so you asked him about the. It was a private talk between. We had a meeting, a separate meeting, between me, ES, Sec Dominguez, and um, Sec um, Chokno. So it was the main discussion? No, it was not main discussion. Just it was one just, of you know, one of those uh, things that came out. Uh, mm -hmm. Just another detail. Then the warehouses that you said uh, it, you have intelligence report. So the president uh, yeah. The, these warehouses are owned by the rice traders? Yes, I understand. This he announced in the cabinet meeting. And this was uh, not in the agenda, but he began the cabinet meeting by talking about the Libya situation, the corruption, and the rice situation. So he was briefed about yung, how, how, like how bad is the rice hoarding problem? Let's just say he knows who the rice hoarders are and where their warehouses are. But he won't uh, force open new warehouses until he Western. has threatened to force open so, them. He has given them fair warning, and he says, "Let them sue me if they want." But if the situation calls for it, I will break open the warehouses because this is a matter of national security. Food security is a matter of national security. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Jen, follow, follow up. <coughs> Sir, bago nagsona, sinabi ni Secretary Andanar sa National Security Meeting, parang inutus, may inutusan si Presidente sa meeting at tinawagan niya yung isang alleged na sangkot dun sa rice cartel at pinagmumura daw. Sir, alam pala ni Presidente kung sino ito at alam niya yung mga aktibidad. Bakit po hindi pa sila sinasampahan ng kaso? Well, nung tinawagan po siya ni Presidente, and this was supposed to be off the record, <laughs> you did not hear it from me, um, but um, since it's out, he was given 72 hours, and we monitored. The rice did come out. Um, so there was no need to even announce who he was, and um, apparently he emptied his warehouses. Pero di ba krimen po yung rice hoarding? Well, Nangyari naman po yung rice hoarding, bakit po walang kinakasuhan at walang napaparusahan sa kanila? For That's a gray area, ha? Kasi papasok yan dun sa unfair competition, no? Pero unfair competition, well, may mga elements yan that may or may not have been complied with. No? Pero ang ginawa lang ng presidente, easy remedy ko, so magkakasuhan pa, matagal pa. Ito, he was given 72 hours, and in 72 hours, lumabas naman ang bigas. So ang aking assurance sa president, na, sa, ng presidente sa taong bayan, alam po niya kung sino yung mga naglalaro dyan. Para naglalaro na nagre-resulta sa mahal na presyo ng bigas, binigyan sila ng warning, at yung first warning, sumunod naman. So ang kanyang continuing warning is, tumigil na kayo kasi kilala, ko, 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 kilala ng presidente kung sino kayo. And this time around, he made it very clear. Um, he will not hesitate to break open the warehouses. Sue him. But he will break open the warehouses if it becomes an issue of national security. Okay, Jenna Lingkabiling. Sir, back to Nayong Pilipino. Can you give us details about the contract forged by the officials? Is this the contract with the Chinese casino operator? He did not say. Basta, in fact, he did not even specify. No? Basta sabi niya, everyone. So actually, yesterday, last night, kami dalawa ni ES were, talk, were discussing, should we even bring this up to the media because wala pang detalye. No? Niya, pwede nang ilabas siguro yan. No? Basta sabihin na lang, lahat sila. No? It was a contract that in the originally was 70, reduced to 50, now reduced to 25, but the rental payment was still unconscionable. Mm. So, hindi ko alam po ang detalye, but he was just exasperated. No? He started the meeting with a general expression of exasperation. 
And um, it was also a warning to all in the cabinet. Na it's a continuing campaign. No? Sir, and uh, so, so hindi ko alam yung detalye. I was just reporting on what the president said. So is the lease contract now cancelled? He said he will have it cancelled as being um, grossly disadvantageous to government. Mm -hmm. Sir, will you pursue charges? Will the government pursue charges against these nayong Filipino officials? I do not know yet um, whether or not charges will be pursued. I'm only announcing that he has sacked all of them. Okay, last question na tayo. Okay, uh, Ace Romero. Regarding the lease contract, you mentioned 70 years ba yun, if I heard it correctly? Oh, parang originally it was 70 years. And Pero then yung mukhang 50, 25 years lang. Ngayon, naging 25 na. But it started as 70. Ito ba yung Nayon Land Project? As I said, I do not know the details. If I'm just repeating what the President said in relation to his campaign against corruption. Pero bakit nabigyan ng, well, hindi pala yun yung project, hindi niya sinasabi. Pero, so definitely the project will be stopped na. Wala na yun, cancelled na yung project. In fact, ironically, today is supposed to be yes. the oh, day they will launch it. No? Sorry to burst your bubble, people. But the President said that's grave, grave, grossly disadvantageous to government. So cancelled na yun. Why, 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 uh, anyway? Bakit daw po disadvantages kahit yung general? No details. No details. Okay. May I follow up on another issue or... Ina e follow up ka ba sana yung Pilipina? Okay. Uh, sec about the EO on the localized peace talks. When do we expect the president to issue that EO? It was approved in the cabinet meeting, so it is forthcoming. Pero, you know, I gave you the salient features earlier. So it's still the same. It's still mm -hmm. based on the same framework that I discussed with you. Okay. So it was just made into an EO. <laughs> so na-approve na ba? Oh, so it's forthcoming. Forthcoming. Thank you, Secretary. Last question na tayo, Inandolong. Sir, may nasa clarification doon sa bago ninyong party, yung hugpong. Which party, sir, were you referring to ba? Yung hugpong um, ng pagbabago of Mayor Sara. Because you were also talking about that uh, yung party ni Pangulong Duterte, which actually is hugpong <laughs> sa katauhan. Yun yung long-time party po ni Pangulo. So which one did you uh, join? I think yesterday, well, yesterday I took an oath under hugpong ng pagbabago. Yung kay Sarah. Mayor Sara? Yes. Sir, um, the bylaws of that uh, part, that organization requires its members to be a registered voter of the region. I believe Narumba. you voted in Quezon City. Baka hindi ako member ng hugpong uh, pagbabago. <laughs> Baka hindi ako naging member ng mm. pong pagbabago. So, uh, paano yun, sir? Because, yeah, eh, ganun po Well, siya. you know, I knew that it was a regional party. I guess the oath was an indication that I support um, the part, the regional party of uh, Mayor Sara, even if I'm not entitled to be a voting member of uh, the party because I'm not a registered uh, voter of the Davao area. Okay, and your reason, the, the reason you mentioned yesterday was that you were joining the party dahil party naman po yun ng Pangulo, and now it's the president, it's different from what the president's party actually well, is. So what is your, sorry, I but what is your business? I think in essence, it's Hugpong is, Hugpong is, you know, whether be it the, the same party or different party, in essence, it's the same, in essence, it's the same Hugpong local party of the president. I know it's a local party. I know it's a regional party. I know I'm from Metro Manila. So for all intents and purposes, it's my, my expression of support knowing that I may not be relevant to the party anyway because I'm not from there. Wala naman mo wala. Oh, di ba? So hindi kayo member after. She is the daughter of my boss. Why will I not? Why will I not support her? Oh. Thank you, sir. Okay, last question is ay Celerina. So clarification lang regarding sa na yung Pilipino. Kasama ba don si Fema Duterte yung kamag-anak ng presidente sa kasalukuyan? No other details. I'm just announcing what the president said. Okay, and we were hesitant even to bring this out because I know that they have a big event today. Well, well. So basahin ko lang yung question ni Pia. Renada, who are the cabinet? Although nasagot niya naman, who are the cabinet members? PR the order to go to Libya to help secure Filipino hostages. Is it true he was dissuaded from sending two frigates? Well, let's just say that uh, initially that was his um, course of action. 
but now he formed a high-level task force. And I said it's headed by um, Secretary Alan Cretano and the um, Muslim members of the cabinet, including, um, okay? Nasagot ko na yan kanina, di ba? Yes. Okay, maraming. Uh, Mara so, Use the microphone. <laughs> so, sir, mukhang ongoing yung event ng Nayang Pilipin. May nagsasayawan dun sa, no? <laughs> so, dapat hindi na sila mag... Because, effectively, wala na sila, di ba? Okay naman, party spoiler na nga tayo. Eh, gusto niyo pang idiin. Okay, thank you very much. See you on Thursday. <laughs> okay, maraming salamat, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps, sa ating mga bisita, Back to Main Studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.